Good morning, first ones. Good morning. Here at our live stream, Sunrise Stroll and Chat. You can see how much cloud there is, so we're going to do something different now. We're going to come in here to the mosaic, the Magdala mosaic. One and a half million pieces of tiles of stones from all over the world. Places that raise eyebrows. And here we have this map of first century Galilee with many of its towns and villages. The famous Decapolis, that's outside of Galilee, obviously, the ten cities, the Greek cities, Deca, Polis, De Decapolis, Mount Tabor. Indor is a special place where King Saul went to the necromants to find out his destiny in the battle the next day. And we leave that story for another day. And then here we have the Sea of Galilee. And while we're waiting for the sun to rise to show its face, we're going to come in here and see a little bit here because there's a very beautiful psalm today. The Lord is my shepherd. And here there's this theme of the shepherd with the sheep. Let me see if I can get this straight for you. I don't know why that's like this now. Maybe this way and make it easier. You see, there you have the sheep and the shepherd. And the little goat. And that's placed here with the name Galilee. Let me see if we get this for you. These are big red letters. An interesting thing about the red letters is Maria Jesus Fernandez is the artist, Artista Fernandez. And she was very thorough in investigating the durability of the best colors she found worldwide. And then she tested their durability or investigated it and found the best, most durable stones of the best colors so that this mosaic could have a big future, a long future, God willing, and be helpful to not and survive all the elements and all the wear and tear. So of the reds here, there are reds actually from, three, from two countries, three different red stones. And one of them is from Iran, and two are from Italy. There's also stones from Kashmir, and there are stones from Brazil and Chile, and from the Jura Mountains in Europe and Germany, and from all over, lots of places. So I came to show you that because we have the Good Shepherd today. You know, we're in the, in the hands of God. Where's that gone? It's over here. There we are, the Good Shepherd, right? In case you're just joining me now, we're in here at the first century mosaic of the map of Galilee. But look at how much cloud we have. So you're not missing a sunrise at the moment. And then I want to show you something else because it's actually in the Gospel story. So Jesus' ministry was all around here in the north part of the sea. Of I have to do it. There we go. We lost some people. Hope they'll be back. I have a, when I have Wi-Fi, sometimes it goes out, so I have to get it on the telephone connection. I hope you're all back. Yes, very good. That's good. You're patient. You're persevering. You're here together. Excellent. So I wanted to show you here the Good Shepherd with his sheep. And then I want to show you something else that's in the Gospel story. Yeah, the birds, somebody's commenting there, Meg, the birds are really, really delightful. In fact, three or four minutes ago, they were especially delightful. I'm going to post a picture, hopefully later in the comments, if I don't forget. And it's the picture of the morning star and the picture of the setting moon over Mount Arbel, which is already gone. This was like 20 minutes ago it was up. So Tyre and Sidon. And these are written there over Phoenicia, the Phoenician area. So this was in southern Lebanon. 
and it's actually not very far north of uh, the border in Israel. And if we look right now, let me fix the camera for you. You're going to look out here and you're going to see the palm trees in our neighbor's property. And behind the palm trees, you're going to see the mountains. And those mountains are, uh, when you're on top of those mountains, you're looking into Lebanon to the north. So that's not very far away. And poor Lebanon is suffering a lot today, so we need to pray a lot for peace and harmony in Lebanon. It's been through so many trials over the millennia for sure because it's such a bridge area as we are here in, uh, in Israel, in the Holy Land, uh, connecting Europe, Asia and Africa. So it's always been an area of tensions and such a beautiful country. So let's pray for Lebanon and all the Lebanese people. So Tyre and Sidon were in Lebanon. Oh, I know where I was now before the connection failed. So let's come back here for a second. So I was saying that 80% of Jesus' public ministry is right here on the northern shore, northwestern corner of the Sea of Galilee, which is our corner here. So you can recognize some places. You recognize, obviously, Magdala, <laughs> Gennesaret, Lake Gennesaret, another name for the Sea of Galilee, and Lake Tiberias. And then you have Capernaum. And Tabka is a name that's not so well known if you haven't been here, but that's where the, it's actually um, Seven Springs, that's what it means. And it's a linguistic corruption that happens normally in languages and changes of languages. And it means Seven Springs, Tabcha. And that's where we remember the multiplication of the loaves and the primacy of Peter. There are two different shrines right together. And the Mount of Beatitudes. And Capernaum is where Jesus' base was, his home base of his mission. So you can see why it's in the center of the northwest corner of the Sea of Galilee. No wonder in that area, then, if Jesus' base, base uh, for operations is there, then it's going to be there. And then you have a Bethsaida over here, and you actually have two Bethsaida. And that's interesting in our time because the one that was claimed was the one on the left, just north of it, Bethsaida Julius, which has been wonderfully excavated by Rami Arab from Nebraska, University of Nebraska. And then you have Bethsaida uh, here which um, which could be actually beside the Julius. And that's the big dispute between the archaeologists now. And it, uh, it could be the home of the, of the apostles, um, where they were raised as little boys, a fishing village beside the Sea of Galilee. And here you have the scenes in the Sea of Galilee. But we don't need to look at a mosaic of the Sea of Galilee because we have the real one. We're at the Sea of Galilee in this sunrise stroll and chat. But look at all that cloud. So that's why we're here. Now let's come back to this story here of Tyre and Sidon. So today's gospel is actually located there. Jesus goes to Tyre and Sidon. And he goes to stay away from the crowds. But actually, uh, there's a wonderful miracle happening. And so we'll get there in a moment. Here things are very quiet right now. Everybody's still asleep, you know, vacations. Although it's a great thing to get up early in the morning and see, see the, the sunrise and hear the birds sing, you know. So let's go for a little bit of a stroll here. And we'll read a text. You know, uh, why don't we read a text right now? I'm not sure if I found the right spot for you to do that. This is maybe a nice moment to notice this Ponciana tree that's in full bloom, the golden Ponciana. And it's a while ago since we had a full red bloom here, now we just have a little... And there's still some buds up there, so there's still going to be red bloom here for a while. And it's interesting in the area, there are some other red Ponciana... Oh, there's another yellow one full bloom. So these three Ponciana, two are yellow. 
there we are I didn't show you that one before oh, another little interesting detail is the dates are ripening so I want to invite you to a date a fresh date from Magdala these ones are very good actually they're better than the ones over by the lakeside they grow bigger they're juicy delicious and they're in there in these little mesh bags uh, protected from the birds because the birds know they're pretty good too but there's still lots of free ones for the birds there's a little color coming in the sky so that means the Sun is making some progress so let's walk around here and see how we're doing and there are birds in here in the Bougainvilleas right right in here just a yard away there you see them and the sparrows that were sold for a penny but you are worth much more than a lot of sparrows I'm not sure if they're sparrows but it works in terms of their size and look at this other old olive tree old knotty gone through so much and still bearing tons of fruit look at all those olives lots of them in here look at that look at this here so here we are so now we can keep an eye on the Sun there's a little color coming in the sky but it's taking its time maybe we'll just stop here for a little bit and get some archaeology for you here we're at the port if we have new people with us this is the first century port of Magdala which was a fishing town exporting its fish to Rome imagine to the heart of the Roman Empire So then our reading today we're with Jeremiah as usual in this week and last week a very rich text Jeremiah was a man who suffered an awful lot and you know people go through suffering into great spiritual depth many times and we can even see that with the corona period it brought a lot of people closer to God obviously a lot of people have suffered tremendously and maybe become very depressed and that's terribly sad so we need to pray for them so we're in Jeremiah chapter 31. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the tribes of Israel and they shall be my people. That, that theme goes through all the time. I will be their God and they shall be my people. How we need to know that God is always with us. God loves us. Like you can't separate a child from a parent. Especially you can't separate a parent from a child. The parents just know too well about their child. And they've walked that road with the child from conception onwards, especially the mother has such proximity. We're looking at a Roman road from the first century, right here, north-south. That's the pavement. How much road have you walked with your children for a long time? maybe with your grandchildren already you know God cannot be separated from humanity no matter how bad things get and that's that's just simple uh, gift of faith to know this it's truly faith and this is the strong message of the scriptures like the one big constant message we were created by him and he is provident Lord and no matter what's going on he's staying with us his favorite old olive tree here I love this olive tree
Look at all those olives. Now they're getting bigger and they'll be getting a little riper. Which you can't eat, eat olives straight off the tree, they need to be cured. And the certain we do too. <laughs> we need a lot of maturing, don't we? We need a lot of maturing. There's a gentleman down there having a swim, so I think we'll just stay back here, have a little respect, and he won't feel that we're intruding in his privacy. This line here from Jeremiah is one that we all cherish. With age old love I have loved you. With age old love I have loved you. So I have kept my mercy toward you. Again I will restore you and you shall be rebuilt. O Virgin Israel carrying your festive tambourines you should go forth dancing with the merrymakers and we just had the festivity of Tu Be'av if you want to google it T-U and B and A-V and it's a festival of romance like St. Valentine's Day and it's um, it has ancient roots I mentioned in the Mishnah and the Talmud and it was times of bringing the wood to the temple uh, some different uh, sources uh, celebrated in different ways it's not a, a very big feast like Yom Kippur that although it's connected with Yom Kippur as well they say it's the beginning of the grape harvest so it's interesting when uh, people began and in the harvest which was within Yom Kippur it's interesting how you have these special days of prayer because you're connecting with God who leads us, who walks with us, who doesn't abandon us. So this religious dimension of the human heart. Again you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. Those who plant them shall enjoy the fruits. Yes, a day will come when the watchman will call out, will call out on Mount Ephraim, "Rise up, let us go to Zion, to the Lord our God." So here we see this: the people are called to be in this relationship with God, and that's what we want to do at this hour of the morning. Here in the beauty of this place, to be in relationship with God. And there's a wonderful woman today in the Gospel story that really is amazing. And Jesus goes away to take a break from all the ministry. At that time Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. He withdrew. He, he left the region of Galilee, of this lake area, where it was so intense, so hectic, anywhere he would go, he would be seen, and the people would start bringing their sick people, and he needed also that the disciples take a break. And he was human, like us in all things but sin, so obviously it was important for him also to have a break. The wisdom of being able to have a break, even the Son of Man, with all his divine power. He withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out. You remember we just saw the, the spots in the mosaic there and the mosaic map. And by the way, a huge thank you to all of you who have sponsored tiles or parts of the mosaic. Um, you are really building up Magdala here as a place of great encounter. Thank you so much. And thank you for all the donations because some new donations have come in for the for the equipment here for the live streaming. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. You're all going to be benefiting from this. And so we saw there on the map Phoenicia and Tyre and Sidon in southern Lebanon. 
And so Jesus goes to a place that's far away, into a foreign area. It's like, you know, Europeans go to uh, maybe the Southeast Asia for a vacation. Or Americans come to Europe. You know, they, he went to a different place to get away. That whole idea is not, we didn't invent it in the 21st century or the 20th century. And this lady surprises him. She comes out and she says, My daughter is tormented by a demon. Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. So this is amazing. And wait till you see what Jesus does. Because he doesn't make it easy for her in the sense that uh, he's going to test her more deeply. Have pity on me. Lord, son of David, my daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not say a word in answer to her. He ignored her. How terrible it is to be ignored. You say something, the family's having a good time at dinner table, and nobody picks up on what you said. It was a joke. Nobody laughed. You're with friends, uh, having uh, whatever, and a little drink or some social time, and you say something, and nobody notices. They're all distracted about something else. So he did not say a word in answer to her. So she has to rethink. His disciples came and asked him, send her away for she keeps calling out after. So like she's still on his case. Look at that light, people. Isn't that amazing? I'm not sure today if we're going to get the sunrise. But we're pretty close. And that light's so, so, so fantastic. And he, and he said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I don't think he was shouting, but she hears him. The woman came and did him homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, it is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. And she said, please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. So Jesus tests her humility. And she bows completely. What an example. And Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed from that hour. There's the sun, people. There's the sun. It didn't fail us. <laughs> And it's just going to wink for a moment, just enough time for us to see it. Look at that. Let me walk another little bit for you here. Although I should bring this down because I don't want to have you wobbling all over the place. You know, we have that big principle here. You cannot be focusing on one detail when you move. If you're making a decision in life and you're moving, have the big picture. That's the parable of the zooming in. Oh, I don't want to stop here now. I'd like to so much, but that family might be a little bit sensitive. We have a lot of uh, Jewish uh, Orthodox uh, religious uh, people staying here at the very moment. And it's amazing, you know. Everything is the exact same in Magda like it always was. And everybody is coming from all different directions. Magda welcomes everybody. It's amazing. Wow, the sun is disappearing again. So let me try it from here and get you this picture here. Yeah, it's, it's just gone behind that cloud. It's just gone behind that cloud. But that's not bad light, is it? The word bad doesn't belong here. It's foreign.
So people, it was just wonderful having you with us this morning, joining again as we pray for each other, as we enjoy the gifts of this world together, as we encourage each other each day. We wish everybody there on the west coast of the Americas a wonderful rest as you go to sleep and all the people in the east good morning <laughs> welcome good afternoon to people way over in in eastern asia we're in western asia here so the sun is just appearing there again so with that we'll say goodbye god bless you see you later alligator there's the sun again as it's coming look at that Isn't that beautiful? There it is out again. So we got a double header this morning. God bless you all. See you later, alligator.